Welcome to Christ the King Church in South Minneapolis for this Ash Wednesday virtual service. I'm Deacon Jim. Father Bill is out for today, but he'll be here to do ashes later. I want you to remember that though this service is virtual today, we will be distributing Holy Communion and ashes throughout the day on this day. So just check the website at Christ the King to find out the exact times and, and when it's happening. Thank you very much. Let us begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The grace and mercy and the peace of God our Father and Christ our Savior be with each and every one of you. And, and also with, with you. you. My brothers and sisters, the hour of God's favor draws near. The day of God's mercy and of our salvation approaches when death was destroyed and eternal life began. As we begin this season of Lent, we gather today to acknowledge that we are sinners. As we express our sorrow, may God be merciful to us and restore us to his friendship. And let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, the light of your truth bestows sight to the darkness of sinful eyes. May this season of repentance Bring us the blessings of your forgiveness and the gift of your light. And grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And let us listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, 
with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps God will again relent and leave behind a blessing. Offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Proclaim a fast. Call an assembly. Gather the people. Notify the congregations. Assemble the elders, gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for the land and took pity on the people. The word of the Lord. Sinned, 
we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me again the joy of your help, Lord, with a spirit of fervor sustain me. O Lord, open my lips, O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Be merciful, O Lord, we have sinned, we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Sisters and brothers, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made him who did not know sin to be sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For it says, in an acceptable time, I heard you. And on the day of salvation, I helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Praise and honor to you, O Lord, O Lord. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, O Lord, O Lord. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. Praise and honor to you, O Lord, O Lord. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, take care not to perform, to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not, left, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. 
when you pray. Do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that others may see them. <laughs> Amen. I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise and honor to you, O Lord, O Lord. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever thought about what it means to uh, rend your heart? instead of your garment. <laughs> you know, even though the specifics that Joel is responding to are a bit different from the issues that we've faced this past year, you know, I suspect that many of us can identify with the thoughts expressed in the book from the prophet Joel, which was written, at least in part, during a prolonged drought. Think climate issues. As well as a matching pandemic of sort, was a plague of locusts. You know, clearly, the people were suffering and starting to lose their faith in God. Yet, you know, rather than seeing the situation as lost, Joel tells them to actually return to God where they can find redemption and even resurrection of spirit. Over the past year, I suspect that some of us may have started to, at times, wonder if we also have lost God's blessing. <laughs> now, I'm not one to point fingers at anyone, but it might be me. I might have fallen into that category. So, together, as we begin this season of Lent, let's take a moment to really hear these words from the prophet of Joel that we find in our first reading of what to do and what to tear and what to rend. You know, rending our hearts and not our garments is not really about just a, an external change of action, nor is it turning worship into some kind of cult. No, it's about changing our whole vision of and conduct towards God and towards others. Now, of course, in addition, it, it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, it's always a good idea to listen to what the prophet Jesus has to say. Now, you know, just as Joel writes about rending our hearts, not our garments, our Lord is encouraging us to make these practices of almsgiving, prayer, and fasting a matter of the heart, not a matter of appearance. So it's not surprising that today's gospel is part of the Sermon on the Mount, which begins with the Beatitudes. See, in these we see that the core of Jesus' teaching follows the prophetic tradition which calls us, and that all of us, to act with gentleness, to show mercy to others, to strive for righteousness, exhibit purity of heart, as well as be a peacemaker during troubled times. You know, both Jesus as well as Joel are asking us today to renew our commitment 
to building up and living in God's kingdom. Still, we could be tempted to start our Lenten journey with the idea of personal improvement and hoped for public acknowledgement. <laughs> Truth is, I've been guilty of that same thing over the years. You know, but that, that's not what God is asking of us. God is asking us to return to kingdom living. And that's never been about trying to appear worthy before God or others. It has always been about living selflessly for others. Today's readings are just instructions and an invitation. They are instructing us on the way to behave and they're inviting us to hear God's message anew in our hearts, in our very soul. During this season of Lent, we are called to turn away from our sins and turn more faithfully towards the gospel message of love of God as well as love of our neighbor. You know, our Lenten practices should not be undertaken to rectify bad habits or change our ways in order to draw us closer to God. They are meant to claw us closer to God and not to impress people. See, it's about living selflessly for others. And then Jesus' promise to us is that if our actions are conducted in such a way that they are directed for the growing of God's kingdom, God, our Father, will see what others cannot. And God will respond. Dear friends in Christ, let us ask our God to bless these ashes, which we'll use as the mark of our repentance. Lord, bless the sinner who asks for your forgiveness, and bless your people who receive these ashes. May we keep this Lenten season in preparation for the joy of Easter. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. It is the desire of our merciful God that we should wake up from our complacency, turn away from sin, and live according to our baptismal calling. Let us pray that the Lord will bless our Lenten fast and that through these 40 days, our passion for proclaiming the good news be increased.
that all peoples everywhere may be reconciled to God and to one another, recognizing this season now as the acceptable time. We pray. Listen, Lord, listen, Lord. That the people of the world may treasure the good earth which God has given us and exercise the wisdom and will to preserve and protect it. We pray. Listen, Lord, listen, Lord that the plight of the distressed and afflicted may touch our hearts, renewing our resolve to be ministers of Christ's compassion. We pray. Listen, Lord, listen, Lord. That our parish community, together with the whole church, may cheerfully embrace the sacred disciplines of Lent, praying, fasting, and giving alms as the gospel teaches. We pray. Listen, Lord, listen, Lord. That all who are sick and all who suffer any pain or sorrow may find strength and consolation in Christ. We pray. Listen, Lord, listen, Lord. That all the faithful departed may rest in God's mercy, and all those who mourn be consoled, we pray. Listen, Lord. Now, in obedience to Christ himself, let us join in prayer to the Father by asking him to forgive us as we forgive others. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you are the source of life, and in your light we see light. You know our weaknesses. Strengthen us to reach out with joy to grasp your hand and to walk more readily in the light of your ways. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may God, who has adopted us, bless us. May the Son, who has received us as brothers and sisters, come to help us. And may the Spirit, who has made a dwelling place in us, always be with us. And may Almighty God bless you all, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than light. The 
Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours. Victory is ours. Through him who loved us. Victory is ours. Victory is ours. Through him who loved us. Goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours. Victory is ours. Through him who loved us. Victory is ours. Victory is ours. Through him who loved us.